Are you going to be taking Calculus 1 soon? Well, whether or not you actually want to do it, here's a bunch of preliminaries you should know before you go into Calculus. You'll use everything I talk about in this video at least a few times in Calculus, and it's just good math to know. Let's start with Absolute Value. This one's a pretty easy concept. Anything with the Absolute Value symbol around it is simply the positive version of that value. So the Absolute Value of negative 13 is just 13. Absolute values are also sometimes used when you're solving equations. For example, if you have x minus 4 is less than 3, you have to do two equations to find the answer. You have to do x minus 4 is greater than 3 and x minus 4 is less than 3. And then you can find the range of what x can be. Distance formula. The distance formula lets you find any two distances between any two points on a plane. The distance formula is the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. It's a pretty plug and chug equation, so not too bad. Next, we have the midpoint formula. The midpoint formula allows you to find the midpoint of any two points on a line. It'll give you an x value and it'll give you a y value, that's your midpoint. The formula for the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 is your x value, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is your y value. Another pretty simple one that you'll use a few times. You need to know y equals mx plus b. That's simply the formula for any linear function, and you need to know it in standard form. The standard form of a linear function is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. You probably learned these in middle and maybe early high school, but you do need to know them, so don't forget them. Now let's talk about some stuff that's going to take a little longer to explain. You will need to know the definition of a function and what they are. A function for any equation is simply just an x value that has exactly one y output. You may have heard of the vertical line test, which can test if an equation is a function or not. All you do is draw a vertical line, and if your vertical line hits two different y points at the same x point, it is not a function. An example of a function is 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. If I were to plug in 3 for x, the answer would be 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 4, which is equal to 31. But the other thing with functions that you ought to know is combining functions. Your functions may be labeled as f of x, g of x, or h of x. In this case, that's pretty much the same thing as y. So y equals x plus 4 is the same thing as f of x equals x plus 4. f just stands for function with respect to x. So for example, if I put f of 4, our function instead of being x plus 4 would just be 4 plus 4. But we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide these functions within each other. So let's talk about that real quick. So our f of x will be x squared plus 2x plus 24, and our g of x will be x minus 4. We can manipulate these functions in different ways. First, we'll start pretty easy. f plus g of x is simply adding the two functions together. So all we have to do is add x squared plus 2x plus 24 to x minus 4. x squared is the only squared component, so that just stays as x squared. 2x plus x equals 3x, and 24 plus negative 4 is just 20. So f plus g of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 20. Now let's do f minus g of x. f minus g of x is simply equal to x squared plus 2x plus 24 minus x minus 4. So once again, there is only one x squared, so that stays the same as x squared. 2x minus x is equal to just 1x, and 24 minus a negative 4 is the same thing as 24 plus 4, which is just 28. Now for the fun part, we can multiply and divide these as well. Let's do f times g of x. x squared plus 2x plus 24 times x minus 4. Yes, we're going to have to do a bunch of distribution. This will take a second and I'm going to have to read off my little script over here x squared times x will be x cubed, 2x times x will be 2x squared, 24 times x is just 24x. Now to distribute with the negative 4, x squared times negative 4 is just negative 4x squared, 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x, and 24 times negative 4 is negative 96. We can combine a bunch of like terms to get the final answer of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 16x minus 96, and that is equal to f times g of x. We got one more though, we gotta divide f of x by g of x. This is actually pretty easy because you literally just plug it in. So our answer is actually just x squared plus 2x plus 24 divided by x minus four. You could do the whole long division for it, but you really don't have to because it'll end up being the same thing for a lot more work you don't need to do. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can also do f of g of x. If you don't remember what this means, it means that we're plugging the g function into f. So instead of our function being f of x, it's f of x minus four. All this means is that we need to replace every x in the f of x function with g of x. So our answer here comes out to x minus 4 squared plus 2 times x minus 4 and then just 24 because we don't have an x to plug into. You can fully foil this out and distribute it but that's kind of a waste of time because it'll end up being the same thing and just look worse. And one more thing with functions, we need to talk about the domain of a function. The domain of a function is just how many x values are within that function. So for example, a line going from x equals 0 to x equals 3, the domain is just 0 to 3. Knowing this, we need to find the domain of some functions. In this example, we need to find the domain of x minus 3 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. Remember, we can't divide by 0 so we need to find anything that makes this bottom function, the denominator, equal zero. Everything else will work just fine. In order to do this, we just set x squared minus x minus two equal to zero. And as you can probably tell, this is a polynomial, which means we can factor it. In this case, our factors become x plus one and x minus two. And we can set both of those factors equal to zero. So the only numbers that are not within our domain are negative one and two.
Finally, we need to write this as our final answer. So everything from negative infinity all the way up to negative one is completely fine. So our first parentheses will be negative infinity to negative one. Then we'll draw a big U in between, that's called union. And in our second parentheses, we're going from negative one to two, so we'll just put negative one comma two. And then from two all the way to infinity, everything works in this function. So then we just draw another big old U, a big old union. In our last parentheses, it's just two to infinity. And that is our domain. Now let's move on to trigger view, or at least a little bit of it. I'm gonna make a separate video on trigger view because there's a lot to learn, but I wanna go over some things. Just as a reminder, yes, you should know your trigonometry very well, especially when you get into calculus too. So please, please review your trigonometry. I'll make another video on it in the future. Let's start with something that I know you're familiar with, Sokotoa. Sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. This rule can help us find the side lengths and angles of right triangles. So if you remember your 30, 60, 90 triangle, your 45, 45, 90 triangle, and so on. I'm also gonna go over some trig rules that you will have to know for calculus one and two especially but you will use them a little bit in calc three as well cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta always equals one this can help you cancel out a lot of extra cosines and sines within your function because one is so much easier to work with than trig functions one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta sine of two theta also known as a double angle is equal to two sine theta cosine theta and finally one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta these will be very helpful especially in calculus two just trust me you're going to want to know these Oh, and also remember your unit circle. I know you used it in a pre-calculus and it'll come in handy in calculus one and two, especially. And finally, the last thing you should know is completing the square. And while I don't feel comfortable covering it in this video because it's long and I'm not really a master at it, it's something you should know and I'll make a video on it soon when I practice it a little bit more. So yeah, that's pretty much all your calculus one preliminaries. I'll make a trig video and I'll make a completing the square video. But in the meantime, study all those things I was just talking about and be sure you know them because it will be extremely helpful in all of your calculus classes. If you guys need help with anything, be sure to comment it below what you want to see in the next videos and I will see you guys next time.